All right, in this video, we're being asked to find the mass of a solid that's bounded in three dimensions by two surfaces here. One, one is z equals four. That's a, a horizontal plane that has a, a height of four. And the other is a, a cone shape, z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Um, now, if you're curious how that looks like a cone, um, what you can do is just uh, a couple different ways you could see it. If you let y be zero, if you took like a cross section, you get z equals the square root of x squared. Well, that's the absolute value of x. So you get a, a v-shaped graph that in the that way in the xz plane. And then likewise, if you let x equals zero, you get a absolute value graph in the yz plane. So you have this v-shaped graph that is basically being rotated around the z-axis and so you can kind of see how that would play out into a cone here uh, another way to see it is to just pick uh, random z values like 2 and you'd have x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared if you squared both sides and that's a circle and as the height gets higher as the z gets bigger the circles get larger because they have larger a larger radius so you could see it either way there. But um, anyways, um, to compute the uh, mass of a solid, you also need to know what its density is because the density of the solid affects its mass, obviously. So the density function is given. It's rho of x, y, z equals k times the square root of x squared plus y squared. So you provided an x, y, z location. Um, and it'll tell you what the density is at that XYZ location. So I went ahead and drew a picture here. Um, now there's a formula that'll give you mass. It's done by taking a triple integral. Here, here's your formula here. Uh, done by taking a triple integral of the density everywhere. So if you integrate over that solid, the density function, it'll give you the mass. So I went ahead and filled in the density function and the triple integrals. Um, so now we have to, to get to the meat of the problem and that's writing the limits of integration and, and actually doing the integration. Um, one thing that catches my eye right off the bat is because they gave us z values from blank to blank, you know, a, a lower z value and an upper z value, um, that would make a, a pretty pretty nice bound between these two curves. And since this bound here, the lower bound, has x's and y's as so many variables, we'll probably want to put that on the innermost limit of integration. So we'll go, uh, the lower limit is that cone, that square root x squared plus y squared, and the upper limit would be 4, right? It's bouncing around between the two. Um, because you remember we want less and less variables as we move out to the outermost limit. And the outermost limit of integration, to make sure that this triple integral really gives me a numerical answer, these two last limits of integration need to both be constant, so I'll keep that in mind. All right, so now we can go dz dy dx or dz dx dy. The region that we're integrating over in the xy plane, if you look here, shaded in in yellow is a, a circle. So um, we could do this really in either order, and I don't think it would really matter. Um, that circle, by the way, being of radius 4 would be x squared plus y squared equals 16. That's a circle of radius 4. So it would be probably, in my opinion, most natural to solve for y. So y would be plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared, like so. So what's happening here is the plus is a, at the top half of the semicircle and the minus is the bottom half of the semicircle. So being that that has variables, I'll, I'll probably make that the, the middle limit of integration or variable of integration. And we'll go from minus the square root of 16 minus x squared to plus or positive 16 minus square root 16 minus x squared. And then dx being the outermost limit of integration, that'll bounce between a constant of 4 and a or a constant of minus four to a constant of four, so um, so that'll complete complete everything. Now, uh, actually chewing through this algebra, I think would be horrendous. Um, I, I could probably do the first integral here w without too much trouble because this integrand has nothing to do with z, so we would treat it like a constant. But getting to the second and the third integral would be very very bad. But uh, one other thing that I notice 
is that this um, re region in the XY plane is circular, that, that just kind of screams polar form, right? So if you're familiar with polar coordinates and whatnot, we could integrate this probably easier with respect to R and theta as opposed to X and Y. Uh, we will certainly do that because I don't want to do it this way, but uh, I tell you what, let's, um, let's do the first integral with respect to Z as is, and then when we have to, we'll convert it over to, to polar coordinates. All right, so just as a, a quick reminder how you do that when we get it down to a double integral so we don't have to stop. Uh, it's pretty natural. Um, uh, if you have a double integral of some function dx dy or dy dx, we basically change it to dr d theta, and we say that the thetas range from one radian angle to another, and the r's range from one value to another. Uh, we take the x's out and replace them with r cosine theta. That's what x is in polar coordinates. We take all the y's out, replace them with r sine theta. So that's very natural. That's what y is in polar coordinates. Um, the only thing that students typically get hung up with or forget is uh, when you convert to polar form like this, there is an extra factor of r that has to be incorporated into the integrand. So don't forget this guy. I'm not going to go through and explain why he shows up quite quite in this video, um, but just remember we, we need this extra factor of r uh, when the time comes. Okay, so um, here's here's our integral. Let's let's go ahead and get started. All right, um, I'll write as quickly as I can. So I hope I don't lose anybody, but I don't want the video to take four days. All right, so we'll leave the outer two limits of integration. square root 16 minus x squared. Okay, um, we integrate the innermost integral first. You go inside out for these um, double and triple integrals. So integrate this stuff with respect to z, you get k times the square root of x squared plus y squared z, right? Because all that's treated like a constant. So if that was 5, it'd be 5z, or 7, it'd be 7z. Bracket from the square root of x squared plus y squared. I know that's probably hidden behind my picture-in-picture. Picture. I'll move it in just a second. dy dx. Okay, so there it is. Did that first integral bracket and upper and lower limits of integration. All right, now it's time to plug them in. Now, who do we plug these in for? We plug them in for z because we just integrated with respect to z. So what I'll probably do is I'll move the k out since it's a constant. I'll keep the outer two limits of integration. And then I'll plug in 4 and the square root of x squared plus y squared in for z and subtract. Okay, you plug in 4, you get 4 square root x squared plus y squared. And then minus... All right, when you plug in the square root of x squared plus y squared in for z, you get the same quantity squared, which will really just negate the square root. So you get x squared plus y squared dy dx. Okay, so we've reduced the triple integral down to a double integral. And, and here's where, uh, if you could do this double integral, you would get the right answer but the algebra would be horrendous because this is not treated as a constant anymore. We're integrating with respect to y and we actually have y's in this messy thing. So now is the time where I think I'm ready to change this to polar form. So I've got my k and that circular region rather than writing it this crazy way in terms of x and y, I think it'd be more natural to express this as dr d theta where the thetas go from, let me look at my picture, All right, this yellow region, the thetas would go 0 to 2 pi, it's a full revolution, a full circle, and the radius would go from 0 out to 4, 0 out to 4, as you're spinning around from 0 to 2 pi, and you'll, you'll uh, paint that whole region there. Okay, so um, d thetas go 0 to 2 pi, and the r's go 0 to 4, and the integrand will be, all right, we'll have, let, let me jot this above right here. We'll have four, all right, this x squared plus y squared is, equals r squared, Pythagorean theorem. And the square root of that will give you 4r, all right, minus 
r squared, right? 4r minus r squared. But when we remember our extra factor of r that we talked about, remember we have to include that guy, we would actually get 4r squared minus r cubed. 4r squared minus r cubed. Okay, so we'd have k times the integral 0 to 2 pi. Then integrating this would get 4r cubed over 3 minus, this would be r to the 4th over 4, bracket 0 to 4 d theta, d theta. All right, so then we get k times the integral 0 to 2 pi. Um, 4 cubed is 64 times 4 is 256 over 3. All right, so then we have that over 3. And then minus 4 to the 4th is 256 over 4 d theta. All right, a um, little mental math here. 256 over 3 minus 256 over 4. That would be 256 over 12, right? 256 over 12. K, and you can check my algebra on that. Um, times the integral 0 to 2 pi of 1 d theta. Uh, now this last integral is quite simple. You integrate 1 with respect to theta, you get theta. You plug in 2 pi, you get 2 pi, right? You plug in 0, you get 0. So final answer, let's see if I can do some of this in, in my head. I hope I can. I think you would get 128 pi over 3k. Right? And again, you can check my algebra on that, but that's just reducing fractions and all that kind of stuff. So what is this? Well, this represents the mass. This represents the mass of this particular solid with this particular density function. So as this density function would change, that final answer would change. But um, once a k is decided upon for the density, if this was a, a real solid and we could uh, figure out this k value, you could plug it in and get an actual numerical value for the, uh, the mass of the solid.